Hello, and welcome to the first of a series of several short updates on things you need to know in surgical pathology in 2021. Uh, my topic today is titled, What do I need to know about P53 in GYN pathology? <clears throat> of course, uh, P53 is not a uh, new uh, uh, term, but uh, it uh, is important to re re reflect on how central it is to a number of very critical cellular responses. Now, one way to organize this is to think about the various stress responses a cell may face. There can be uh, nutrient uh, or uh, hypoxic uh, stresses. Uh, there can be viral infection, oxidative stress, uh, radiation damage, uh, various other sort of replicative uh, stresses. All of these things uh, impinge on the TP53 gene pathway and signaling that may result in a variety of types of responses, metabolic changes, uh, secretory products sent out into the microenvironment, metastasis, DNA repair, apoptosis, and so forth. Uh, even more important to pathologists is the fact that uh, one of the uh, key proliferative uh, pathways, the KRAS mutation hyperproliferative stress, is also mediated through TP TP53. Um, and through whatever a variety of alphabet soup gene interactions on, and protein changes and so forth that may result in the response, uh, we see that this uh, central role of TP53 gene is critical. So if this gene is inactivated or not active, uh, we can imagine that that might be uh, significant for cancer. Well, not surprisingly, and I'm sure data that everyone is well aware of, uh, <clears throat> TP53 mutations uh, by tumor site are prevalent in uh, from 47% down to 5%, to 6% 6 of tumors uh, from a broad array of uh, locations. So this is uh, uh, helpful to, to thinking about how uh, understanding and potentially monitoring presence or absence of this mutation can be useful uh, as we think about it. Um, <clears throat> of course, uh, from a GYN pathologist standpoint, there are a few uh, situations where it uh, plays a particularly uh, important role. Uh, ovarian cancers, uh, uterine cancers, um, and not pictured here, we'll talk about vulvar cancers as well. But of course, uh, TP53 mutation uh, is one thing, but uh, the immunohistochemical marker in wide, widest use is uh, really uh, may or may not be a suitable surrogate for uh, that marker. So this study uh, from uh, 2016 uh, nicely illustrates uh, from a pretty broad array of tumors, uh, these were in the GYN tract, <clears throat> the value uh, and limitations of uh, uh, P53 immunohistochemical uh, expression patterns uh, as compared with TP53 mutation status measured by uh, next-gen sequencing. So uh, in this column, we have the uh, no detection uh, identified. Um, and as you can see here, um, none of the overexpression, uh, absence, or cytoplasmic expression patterns uh, were associated with a no, de no mutation detected. Whereas uh, wild type, um, most of those uh, had a uh, um, no detection, uh, no mutation detected. In contrast, uh, uh, when we have um, the presence of um, an absolute, uh, an absolute uh, type of, detect of uh, mutation, here we see the uh, Intel deletion or the splicing uh, mutations, there were rare instances, these two uh, groups here, where these mutation statuses were associated with wild type immunohistochemical expression. So <clears throat> the immunohistochemical expression pattern showing a mutation pattern, highly specific for the presence of a mutation, but not totally sensitive for every mutation. So uh, we can also see from this graph uh, the relative frequencies of the different expression patterns. 
uh, overexpression being the most common, uh, complete absence, uh, the next most common, and a quite unusual pattern, the cytoplasmic expression pattern uh, here illustrated. We can look at that a little more clearly here on this slide, where we see here the uh, overexpression pattern, every nucleus brightly and darkly stained, uh, stroma less so. And here the complete absence pattern in panel B, where some of the stromal cells express the marker, but none of the tumor cells express the marker. Uh, the least frequently seen pattern is this seen in panel C, the cytoplasmic expression pattern, where you get both the cytoplasmic and mucin, and excuse me, nuclear staining of uh, with the marker. The wild type seen here in panel D may be a little bit overexpressed uh, compared to many uh, wild types, uh, but uh, uh, variable, uh, strong and weak and non-expression in uh, different nuclei uh, of the lesion. So, uh, in summary, then. Uh, complete absence or null expression pattern, diffuse overexpression, and the dense cytoplasmic plus or minus nuclear staining, those patterns indicate TP53 mutation with a high degree of reliability. Wild type uh, staining generally um, is indicative of no mutation, but can in rare instances be associated with a mutation pattern. So we report this as. Um, Diffuse overexpression consists with mutated status or mutated pattern, and then list the pattern type, null type, cytoplasmic type, et cetera, uh, versus uh, the essentially negative pattern showing wild type uh, pattern. Um, <clears throat> it is important, I think, on occasion to bear in mind that uh, difference between the wild type staining and mutation status is not complete. Now, what do we do when you get a situation where maybe you have a combination of, uh, say, cytoplasmic staining and wild type staining, as you see here, or a focal clonal area of overexpression and wild type staining, uh, or uh, why, uh, overexpression and complete absence patterns? Um, in these situations, uh, un undoubtedly, we're looking at tumor heterogeneity and clonal subpopulations with different mutations. Um, it probably is worth noting that mutational status uh, is, uh, is expressed in different ways or uh, two different patterns or a mixture of uh, mutated status with wild type status uh, is noted, uh, as this may be helpful in adjusting therapeutics or potentially searching for uh, additional prognostic and therapeutic targets uh, because of the uh, mutational heterogeneity. So uh, the primary use cases in GYN path for these patterns is uh, in endometrial serous adenocarcinoma and its precursors, uh, intraepithelial carcinoma, uh, as well as in high-grade serous ovarian carcinomas and differentiating that from endometrioid versus um, uh, low-grade serous tumors uh, or other uh, lesion. Um, it's also uh, been recently discovered that uh, vulvar intraepithelial lesions of the non-HPV type um, and their related squamous carcinomas also uh, can be a very useful marker in this situation. So often uh, we're confronted with a, a vulvar biopsy in an older patient, and it looks maybe a little bit like lichen sclerosis. It's differentiating, but we're not sure if it's DVIN um, because, of course, we know there's a risk of progression, and some uh, of those cases will go on to develop squamous cell carcinoma. Well, this is a useful situation because differentiated VIN will have a P53 mutation in the basal epithelium, uh, and it will also lose GATA3 expression, whereas uh, it will should be uh, P16 negative. And of course, lichen sclerosis will have ne neither of these uh, features. So here's the pattern we're looking for, uh, band-like linear expression, increased expression of P53 in just the basal layer of the epithelium. Now, as the tumors begin to progress towards squamous carcinoma, uh, potentially that mutation can migrate up into these uh, um, suprabasal cells, but this is not the pattern that should be associated with lichen sclerosis or benign hyperplasias in the vulva. And so any of those times when the DVIN is, the different, is in the differential, uh, including this P53 marker uh, as a potential uh, help, uh, should be undertaken. 
Uh, we found it useful in evaluating margins for these DVIN, DVIN cases, which can sometimes be uh, challenging, uh, as well as in, uh, of course, uh, phenotyping the carcinomas uh, that may develop from this uh, as uh, HPV independent, uh, because of course, these will be all uniformly P16 negative. Now, P53, of course, has use cases in other organ systems. We're not gonna talk about those today, uh, but I thought that uh, I should at least uh, note here that urothelial neoplasms and some uh, cases of dysplasia and IBD or Barrett's, uh, it's also useful. Well, thank you for joining us for this brief update in surgical pathology. Uh, look for some future offerings uh, of this similar vein uh, coming in the days ahead. And uh, we thank you for your time. And uh, until next time, thanks for joining us.